When I set this miter station up here in the new shop, I kind of didn't complete the job. We got the counters in and the cabinets and everything else, and I didn't give myself any way of having an adjustable stop block. Up until this point, I've been using a chunk of wood and some double-sided tape. It works, and it actually works well, but it's slow, it's a little bit cumbersome. Today, I'm gonna use inexpensive T-Track routed into this countertop, and then we'll come up with some sort of a stop block. Now, I'm going to use a router that has a parallel edge guide. I think that's gonna be the easiest way to do this. It will run a groove just deep enough so that this T-Track will sit just below the surface. All right, with my track installed, I've been messing around with some scraps here to see what I want to make my stop block out of. I could just use a piece of three quarter inch plywood. It would be perfectly fine, but I want something a little bit more substantial. I found this scrap here. It's about four and a half inches wide, about almost two inches thick. And I think this works good because with the height, I could cut several pieces of plywood at a time. Or speaking of production, what I've been using a lot lately are these two by twos. Now, if I drop these in here, I could very comfortably cut six at a time if I had a stop block that had a little more width and a little more height to it. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and mill up a piece this same thickness and width, and we'll make it about 10 or 12 inches long. We'll make a key that can fit right inside the opening of our T-Track, and then I'll cut a dado, at least partial way, into the length of this stop block. We'll insert that key in there, and then we'll take a look and see how well that works. All right, I think for this, we just use a little bit of super glue to keep this held in here. And this should be set within a few seconds and we can take this over and see how it fits. So this key should fit inside of here as long as I did everything right. And it does. We can go to this. This is just under six inches. So basically this will work for anything six inches and above. And if I slide it through here, I got a couple tight spots actually. Got a really tight spot down here for some reason, but the primary use is gonna be somewhere in here and that's gonna work just fine for me. So what I need to do now is drill a hole through this key and through the top face, right in the center of it. And then I can install a T-bolt in here. We'll cut away the section where the T-bolt's gonna land and we'll add a knob to it and that should help secure it in place. All right, there's one area where I did mess up though. On this side, it works fine and it comes all the way up to here. But on this side, if I flip it around, we're gonna hit this side. And that's just because this isn't centered on here. So I'm gonna take and rip this edge off so that I can use this on both sides of the miter saw. I'm also going to cut a chamfer on both ends for sawdust relief, just to keep the sawdust from hanging out around the bottom corners and throwing my cuts off. Then I'll ease the edges some so the edges aren't so sharp and stain it black so that I never confuse it with scrap and accidentally throw it away. I think this is gonna work out great. I can use it on both sides of the blade and I can even turn it around to get a little more space on the left side of the blade if I ever need it. I guess you could take it further and add a tape measure to the counter or make it micro adjustable, but all I need this for is to make simple repeated cuts. And for that, I think this is gonna work just fine. <laughs> 